Chapter 57 Princely Arrival Summoning America by Diodoritos M.D. February 4, 1640. San Diego, California. Prince Cabal looked down at the scenery below, watching the escorting American jets with great intrigue. Looking out of the windows of his own private jet a new passenger airliner developed by Graval Khan Defense Company Orson, he saw a glimpse of the future of jet technology. The sleek, angular jets themselves were much more advanced versions of Orson's OR-262 fighter bombers, which are slated to replace Castlines and Terry's fighters by the end of the decade. Sparks of blue exhaust flew from the backs of the fighters, their engines wedged in between two sets of extraneous wings and integrated into the jet's airframe. In comparison, the OR-262s had their engines tucked under their wings. As a graduate from the Imperial Academy of the Sciences, he found interest in the difference in design. He called out to the chestnut-haired young man sitting across the walkway, who was studying the aircraft as well. Mr. Naguano. He turned away from the window to face the prince. Yes, your highness. What do you make of the aircraft design? He asked. The engines inside the frame, the swept wings, the tails. Well, Naguano said nervously. The engines being inside the frame certainly helps to reduce drag. The swept wings are something that we're still working on, especially with airflow and our dynamics calculations. The tails look like they're there for added stability. All in all, I hate to say this, but... Cabal interjected while Maguano paused, sensing that he was unsure about sharing his opinion. It's okay, Maguano. You can speak freely. Naguano gave an appreciative smile as he spoke his mind, Thank you, Your Highness. Frankly speaking, I believe it's clear that this civilization surpasses our own, in terms of technology. It rather scares me how sophisticated that design looks, even from this distance. The fighters continued to fly beside the Grav Alcan airliner. Hem, yes. I had my doubts, but seeing it in person is much different than what the video showed us. Cabal remarked. As a proud Graval Khan, I regret having to admit this, but I agree with your assessment. It's wise to be humble, your highness, Naguano said. Cabal once more found great reason with Naguano's words. He took the wisdom to heart, agreeing with it. Yes, yes indeed, he said, looking outside the window as the plane began to descend. Clouds parted to reveal the city below. Airports filled to the brim with airliners as large as or even larger than the Guti Morn, their dedicated superbomber, seaports bustling with ships of all makes, from wooden sailing ships to massive American cargo ships, and glass skyscrapers reminiscent of Ragnar, sparkling for all the Elysian natives to see. Several warships patrolled the shores, guarding against piracy and sea monsters. He also noticed a carrier with hundreds of small figures walking above decks, and a long line formed outside. Quickly deducing this construct to be a museum, Cabal made a mental note to visit. He stopped himself, realizing that he barely knew the schedule. Curious, he left his seat and ventured toward Jester, Cielia, and Dallas. As usual, Dallas was lazing about, half asleep in his seat while Cielia and Jester discussed diplomatic strategies for the Americans. Seeing Cabal walk up to them, Cielia ceased her conversation, standing up and bowing. Under the table, she kicked Dallas, who immediately shot up when he realized that the prince was in front of him. Your Highness, they greeted. Cabal put his hand out, gesturing for them to sit back down. How goes the strategizing? Jester answered, it's going well, your highness. In fact, we've just finished going over the framework. We decided to wait for more information before laying out the details. What information are you waiting for? Cabal asked. He hoped to prod Jester's mind and learn from his diplomatic expertise. Civilian technology, economy, culture, military if possible. Since the Americans have offered a tour of their country before meeting with their leader, we thought it best to first study their society. We have two weeks' time to learn as much as we can before heading into possible negotiations. 
Oh, a tour. How intriguing, Cabal commented, reflecting on his previous visits to the Mu continent. He smiled, his adventurous spirit aroused by the thoughts of exploring a technologically advanced, alien society. Quite. I believe we even have a few guided tours for the day. Jester looked back at Cielia. Cielia, do you remember the itinerary? Cielia nodded, her glasses reflecting the cabin's lighting as she did so. I do, sir. She recited the schedule from memory, once we arrive, we will have to endure a few moments of the local media. We just need to smile for their cameras for a bit, and then we can head to our convoy of transports, provided by the government. Today, we'll just be getting settled into our hotel, where some guides will go over basic details about American culture, the general laws, how to access services, how to navigate the streets, and so on. We will then be spending another three days in this city, San Diego, before we are flown to New York City, where we will spend another three days, and then finally to their capital city of Washington, D.C. Before Cielia could elaborate further, the pilot announced that they would be landing soon. I see, Cabal said. I'll be asking for more details later, Miss Cielia. He turned around to return to his seat. With a mighty buckle, the plane shook as it descended and touched the lengthy runway. Cabal watched the shifting scenery outside as it whizzed past him. The American passenger planes were much larger up close, almost shocking him as he considered the scope of the airline infrastructure present in just a single city. The plane eventually rolled to a stop near a small, luminous cart. Men with bright vests and orange glow sticks helped guide the plane into its designated spot, where a red carpet and a crowd of reporters awaited. The carpet led to a column of black vehicles, one limousine for the prince and several SUVs for his retainers and the other Gras Valkan visitors. The pilot parked the plane effortlessly by the carpet, declaring that they were good for disembarkation. The plane's stairs deployed, lining up with the velvet stanchions on the ground. Prince Cabal walked down the stairs, waving at the news crews with a regal smile. He was followed by Jester's delegation, who were less receptive than the publicity-oriented prince. They gave slight waves, smiling slightly as they walked down the carpet. Dallas trailed behind them, frowning as he trudged forward with his hands in his pockets. The news crews reached over the stanchions with microphones, yelling over each other in attempts to ask Prince Cabal various questions. Cabal indulged in a few questions that he knew could be answered to the benefit of his empire. Carefully selecting reporters' questions, he strolled up to them with a stride and presence that had proven to woo women back home. Your Highness, could you tell us more about who you are and where you're from? A reporter asked. Of course, Cabal said with a proud grin. I'm Prince Gra Cabal, son of Emperor Gra Lux of the Gra Valka's Empire. Much like yourselves, we too were summoned from our home world. Before the reporter could ask anything further, he moved on. Your Highness. A woman raised her hand. ABC News. Why are you visiting the United States? Seeking to improve public opinion of him, he smoothly complimented the country. I was told that the United States had technology more advanced than the other nations of Alasia. Oh, and the most hospitable society out of all the other nations of Alasia. I just had to visit, he said, promptly leaving after finishing his sentence. Meanwhile, Jester and Dallas did their best to avoid the hounding press. Jester simply ignored them, tuning them out as he looked forward. Dallas pushed the microphones and cameras out of his face, simply telling the reporters to fuck off. Cielia was more inclined to answer some questions, giving basic details about their purpose here and her empire's hopes to establish relations with the United States. As Cabal approached the convoy, reporters attempted to swarm his group. Secret service agents quickly stepped in to protect the prince, blocking access from the crowd of journalists and reporters. The Gravalkans hurriedly entered the vehicles, breathing sighs of relief as their smiles vanished and were replaced by frowns and groans. Cabal and Jester's group entered the limousine while their other staff entered the SUVs flanking it. The media is always the same, 
no matter where you are, ha, huh, your highness. A blue-suited man said from across the limousine. Cabal analyzed the man as he responded, yes, yes indeed. I'm Agent Nomura, the man said, taking off his sunglasses and extending his hand. I'm in charge of your protection and your scheduling during your time here. Prince Cabal shook the man's hand. Well met, Agent Nomura. Nomura exchanged introductions with Jester, Celia, and Dallas as well, noting their personalities for future reference. Classical music played in the background while Nomura elaborated technical details about their stay. We're going to show a series of videos outlining basic rules in this country, including exchange rates between the dollar and the gold bullions you've brought, along with demonstrations of how to use these, he held up a smartphone. What is this object? Cabal asked curiously, reaching out for it. Nomura handed it to him, explaining, Your Highness, it is a versatile communications device. Does your society have telephones? Indeed it does, Cabal said. Telephones were developed about four decades ago. Prior to that, we used telegraph communications. This device has multiple functions, one of which is being a phone. Nomura showed the Gravalcans his iPhone, then navigated to the phone application. Using a dialing system present within this application, I can tap the numbers that correspond to someone's phone number, then call them. I can also save certain numbers as a contact, so I don't need to dial them using the number pad. We will distribute these devices once we reach the hotel. Fascinating, Cabal said as they gathered around the device. I noticed other such applications. What other functions are these devices capable of? I can see you're very open-minded, your highness. An excellent quality for a leader, Nomura commented. Thank you, Agent Nomura. This smartphone is capable of taking notes, calculating math, capturing images and videos, messaging people, playing music, watching videos, and playing games. Nomura pointed at corresponding apps as he explained them. Most importantly, this device is also capable of acquiring information from a vast, digital library that we refer to as the Internet. This Internet can be accessed using browsing applications such as Safari. This may become a bit complicated, but we will have technicians to help guide you at the hotel. I see, Cabal said, his eyes filled with curiosity and wonder. The prospect of a digital library caught his attention. He and Jester's delegation could use this resource to find out more about the Americans. The conversation died down as the ride progressed. Cabal looked out the windows as they passed through beaches and crowds of tourists. The populace seemed no different than that of his homeland, although his homeland still had yet to open itself to the natives. Here however, there were many Elysians walking about and enjoying the sights, with some even conducting magic shows, captivating the attention of the magicless American society. Cabal entertained the idea of hiring mags to perform for the imperial court, but set it aside as the convoy came to a smooth stop in front of their hotel. Hotel staff approached the vehicles, opening doors, and helping Cabal's assistants with the luggages. They moved the luggages to their designated rooms while Nomura helped the Gravalcans register at the lobby. After completing registration, Nomura guided them to the elevators. He pressed a button representing the highest floor. Following a short ride, the doors opened with a resounding bell to reveal a vast suite truly fit for a king. A large living area, kitchen, and dining area separated four smaller bedrooms from a master bedroom. Glass windows providing a full, 360-degree view of the cityscape surrounded the floor. Nomura stepped out of the elevator, turning around to face the Gravalcans with spread arms and a smile, Your Highness, welcome to the United States of America.